Well, our next guest says that it's not all about regulations, though. He says it's also about transparency. We're joined now by Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Engel. And Dr. Engel, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us. Uh, on, and, and when we talk about regulation, it's not just about short sales, but we're also talking about the derivatives market, which is, uh, which is very key today. I believe uh, the SEC, the CFTC, they're going to be handing in their report on how they're going to overhaul regulation uh, in, de in the derivatives market. But, but what you're saying is that it's got to be more transparent. That's the key, right? Well, I think that there, the key issue is we want to protect the economy against not all risks, but instead just systemic risks. What are the risks to the system? And I think one of the important risks to the system comes through the derivatives markets, mm -hmm. which is counterparty risk. The OTC market has uh, risks in every security that's traded, mm -hmm. but there are additional risks because the counterparty might not perform at the time. And that's what makes some financial institutions so complex and difficult to unwind. Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying identify the counterparties then? Identify the counterparties, that's right. So that the, the Obama administration and most people want to move as many things as possible to at least centralized querying, if not exchanges. But but isn't that going to interfere talk. with the ability to trade, the inter interfere with being able to conduct your business if you've, got to, if you've got to make that transparent? I think it's not as big an obstacle as, as, as many people think. I am thinking that the transparency would be only for the products that do not move to exchange. In other words, OTC products should be made transparent. When you okay. do a trade, you should post this on the Internet. Maybe not right away. Maybe you have a week or something like that to post it. So the market would understand the risk that they have in trading with a particular counterparty. Is this counterparty heavily exposed to one particular event or not? Right. But what good would that do? Because you, you would have this information. It's already done. The transaction's already done. So what good is that? Were you saying that then the regulators could monitor that better? And then if there was something that posed too big of a, of a systemic risk, it would be dealt with then? The regulators can, could see this. That's true. But the market can see it as well. So if you are considering entering into an a OTC contract, you would look at different counterparties and have different risks depending on which counterparty you trade with. You would expect these contracts to have slightly different prices reflecting the risks. Mm -hmm. So a company that takes on a great deal of risk, and the poster boy for this is AIG, yeah. would find it hard to uh, write new to, contracts. To go, to go further from there. Okay, right. so uh, quickly, how do you pay for this? It doesn't cost anything. But you said before a tax? A tax oh. on companies? Okay, so I, I think that the, this is a different issue, but the systemic risk, I think, should be uh, dealt with, can be dealt with by a tax on the largest and most systemically risky financial institutions. Okay. And this tax would go into a sort of a rescue fund rather than the taxpayers being the rescue mm. fund. They if you think a company mm -hmm. can't, you can't afford to let a company fail, then you ought to pay, they ought to pay for that. Okay. Uh, that guarantee. Sounds fair enough. All right, Dr. Engel, thanks so much for joining us. Nobel Prize winning economist Robert Engel.